Welcome back to Joe Plays. Over the past year, we've seen some streaming services, uh, so, well, service such as Mixer being shut down. That really leaves only three big top dogs in the streaming world. Uh, Twitch being the most well-known, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, a lot of my content kind of centers around Twitch streaming, but YouTube is taking a big step forward in the streaming community as well. I wanted to share with you how to get OBS set up with YouTube streaming and get your channel set up so that you can stream to YouTube as well. Again, all this is up to you. If you want to stream to Twitch, go for it. If you want to stream to YouTube, that's also a great platform. It's making huge strides in the streaming community, uh, especially starting this year. So keep an eye out for that. We're going to jump on the computer and we're going to get everything set up. All right, back on the PC. So of course we're streaming to YouTube. So let's pull up your YouTube. Uh, if you're logged in, if you head up to your account on the top, right, you're going to head to YouTube studio. This is your hub for all of your YouTube content. Uh, I made a test account just to test some of the streaming stuff and to show you guys what it'll look like when you don't have any content at all. So once you're here, there's a couple things you need to do first. You need to hit, go to your settings channel and feature eligibility. Default features should already be enabled. Uh, just creating an account allows you to upload videos and uh, create playlists. The thing you might not have enabled is things that require phone verification videos over 15 minutes, custom thumbnails and live streaming. So if you don't have this enabled, you're going to have to go through and verify your phone number. And I think that's the only way to do this. So once you do that, YouTube actually puts a hold on your account for 24 hours before you can start live streaming. So that being said, if you don't have this set up, you need to go ahead and verify your phone number and then we'll come back in 24 hours. I'll wait. I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna wait 24 hours, but do this. After 24 hours, you can follow the rest of this video. Once that is set up, you need to actually set up your live stream. In the top right, if you go to create and go live. Now I already have a test stream set up, but I'm gonna walk you through this anyway. Uh, the first part of this is your title. So I'm just gonna call this test stream two. The next section shows who can watch your live streams. Uh, it can be a public listing, unlisted or private private only you can see it unlisted means you can send the link out to anyone you want to as long as they have the link they can watch it and then public is of course public i'm going to add a quick description here a quick test stream this can be as long as you need it to be now this is the important part this is where youtube decides to categorize your live stream if you're here for gaming we're going to go ahead and click gaming you're going to get another input box to add the game title choose bravely default to since that just came out this morning uh, is this video made for kids that's up to you i'm going to say it's not made for kids and then i'm not going to restrict it in my content uh, you need to be careful though to select the correct uh, check boxes here as youtube can either demonetize you or block your channel or stop your live stream so just make sure this stuff is correct for the type of content that you're live streaming the other part of this is the custom thumbnail and I highly recommend thumbnails. A lot of the YouTube algorithm depends on good thumbnails. Now this thumbnail is for the live stream. So keep in mind that if you have a generic live stream thumbnail, you don't have to change this every time, but if you want to have more engaging content, then you, you should probably make a new thumbnail for each live stream that you do. If you have that kind of time. I'm just going to choose a new thumbnail. I'm going to click save and then you'll get to this point here and it says connect streaming software to go live. Viewers will be able to find your stream. Once you go live, this is all the stuff that I set up before the title category game, the, the privacy settings. And then the most important part is the stream key. Now you will see the default stream key here, but I recommend going to create new stream key. Your stream key determines your uh, FPS and your resolution for your live stream. YouTube does handle 1080p content a little better than Twitch. However, I do recommend 720p for YouTube uh, live streaming, unless you just have some really killer hardware. So I'm going to call this stream key 
720 60 fps so anytime i want to stream 720 60 fps this is going to be the uh stream key that i'm going to use and i'm just going to copy this for the description as well rtmp default that's fine stream resolution i'm going to turn on manual settings so this is where i can marry my stream key to my resolution so i'm going to do 720p so that will tell me my bit rate range that I can use to stream at 720p or what YouTube is expecting to push 720p content. I'm going to turn on 60 FPS because I want to do 60 FPS. I'm going to hit create. And now I have my stream key. Remember, don't ever show the stream key to anyone. I'm going to show you what to do with this once we get into OBS. Uh, so for now, we're going to keep going through this. These stream URLs, if you're using something other than Streamlabs or OBS, you will need the URL of the RTMP server. So you can copy those if you need to. However, Streamlabs and OBS both have these built in. Once you choose the YouTube streaming option, it already knows the URL for these. Stream latency. So this is the latency for the viewers. Normal latency, it's a little bit longer. Low latency, ultra low latency. Normal latency, if you see here, you can get higher quality videos. So if you're doing 1080p, you might want to put on normal. Uh, ultra low latency is almost real time. Uh, I just keep it on low latency. Enable DVR. So this is the same thing as the Twitch saving pass broadcast. As soon as your video is done, YouTube has already recorded your video or putting onto your channel. So if you want to uh, archive or download or keep all of your live streams, make sure enable DVR is checked. We're not doing 360 video. If you want to add more delay, that's done here. You can add 30 seconds up to a minute. And again, that's more delay for the viewers. If you want auto generated closed captions, you can put that on. Unlist live replay once stream ends. Now this is important as well. So once the live replay ends being your live stream, you can have YouTube automatically create a listing based off of your title, uh, the category, your uh, privacy settings and your description. YouTube will automatically make a listing for you on your channel for that. If you want to do that on your own, and as long as you have enabled DVR checked and this is unchecked, that's just going to go into your YouTube studio content under live streams where you can edit that there. Your live chat will be over in the right hand side. I can pop out the chat if you click the three little buttons in the top right. And that way you have a modal window that you can move around if you need to get off this page. So now that we have this set, I'm going to go ahead and click copy on the stream key. And it'll say stream key paste in encoder. So now we're heading to OBS. I already have a profile already set up for OBS for YouTube streaming. I'm going to walk you through setting up the stream key. If you go to file and settings, you go to stream service is going to be YouTube RTMP. Uh, RTMPS is in beta. That's just a secure RTMP, uh, but we're not going to use that. Uh, RTMP primary YouTube ingest server. And again, that URL is automatically put into OBS from YouTube. So you don't have to worry about that. Right click paste. And that's it for the stream key. You want to hit apply. Now your output, this is important as well. Uh, I have an NVIDIA card, so I'm going to use the NVIDIA NVINC encoder. Uh, you can change that to X264 if you need to. YouTube recommends using CBR. I'm using a bit rate of 5100 kbps. And again, this is very determinant on your internet speed, uh, primarily your upload speed. And again, this is married to the uh, settings that we chose for the frame rate back on the stream key keyframes keep that at zero uh, you can mess with your own preset and profile if you need to max b frames two making sure that my audio track is being sent to the stream as well so i'm going to head to video and this is where i'm going to set the 720p so my base canvas res resolution i always keep that at 1080 uh, all of my graphics all of my overlays everything is set to 1080 and then i'm going to downscale that to 720 so 1080 in 720 out your downscale scale filter is largely up to you. I like to use the Lanskos and then 60 FPS. I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to hit OK. 
So now that we're in OBS, I'm just going to add a quick source here. So I have a scene. I'm just going to replicate scene one because that's my camera. <laughs> there I am. You can go back through my other OBS tutorials on setting up scenes and sources if you need to. Uh, I'm not putting a gameplay in here. I'm just going to use my camera because I'm beautiful and everybody wants to see me. So now that we've got this set up, I'm going to minimize OBS. You see that uh, YouTube is still waiting on me to connect my streaming software. And I'm going to hit start streaming. Give it a second. And then once it starts going live, you'll see that this page changes to my analytics. So this will show me different statistics on what I want to see. And you'll see a preview of my live view up here. You can also check your stream health here. You notice that my stream status says excellent. So I'm good to go. My stream is actually live. So if I go back to YouTube and I go to my channel, you'll see that this says that I am currently live. So I can click on this to watch my live stream and I go to my channel. <laughs> I got to mute that because of the echo. Uh, so this is actually the live playback of me streaming right now. Your chat is here. You can see everything on the front page. So when you're ready to end your live stream, if you head back to a uh, YouTube studio and click on your back on your go live, your stream is still running. I can end the stream here or I can end it in OBS. If I end this in OBS, there's a little bit of delay of whenever the stream actually ends. So just be careful of that. If you're not wearing pants and you stand up uh, before you go. So I'm going to stop streaming here. That's going to end the stream from OBS and you'll notice that the live stream is still going. And if we give it a minute, you'll see that this starts looking for a signal because I ended my OBS. And you'll see underneath here, it says no data. This stream will end shortly unless you restart it in your streaming software. And this is kind of a built in uh, failover protection. If you're streaming and something happens and your OBS stops working, you actually have a chance to go back, restart your OBS and it'll pick up the live stream again. So it's not like two separate streams. However, if you meant to end the stream, you can also click end stream up here in the top, right? Your stream will stop immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and end that. So remember the next time you want to go live, you will have to come back to the dashboard to start your next stream. So once you're done, you're going to see a short little summary of your stream here. And from here, I can dismiss this or I can edit this in the studio. This will take me back to the video details of my live stream. So remember I had enable DVR selected. So YouTube automatically recorded my video and it's using the thumbnail that I uploaded to the live stream as well. So this is where you could go in. You could change the title of the stream, add more to your description, change the visibility. This is all the fun YouTube stuff that if you're just uploading YouTube videos that you'll see. If you go back to my channel content, you'll see I don't have any uploads, but if I head over to this live tab, you'll see the last live stream that I did. So once you're here on the live tab, you'll see the, the stream that you just did. Uh, there is a download option here. However, YouTube has to uh, process the video just like uploading another video. So the download link will be av available later. So if you want to download this, just come back later. You can edit the title and description or delete forever if you don't want anybody to see it. So now that you've done your first uh, live stream, if you want to go live again, you go to create, go live again. I wait for this to load. So once you're back in here, uh, you can edit all of your stream information. You can change the title, uh, descriptions, thumbnails, all that fun stuff. The great thing about this is the stream key does not change. So as long as you haven't reset or changed your stream key, then you don't have to do anything in OBS. However, if you have, you will need to copy and reset the stream key in OBS under your settings. Again, just like we did earlier in the video stream, this is where you'll change the stream key. That's really all there is to uh, YouTube streaming. It's a little bit harder to change the title and you have to create thumbnails for YouTube as well. However, you can have a generic thumbnail and then change those later after your video is done. But the other great thing is a lot of people take their VODs on Twitch and upload them to YouTube anyway. If you're streaming on YouTube, 
your VODs are already there and you can download them, edit them, re-upload them. You can do whatever you need to with them. So whether you want to stream to Twitch or YouTube, the setup is fairly similar. Uh, just a few changes here and there, but choose the platform you want to stream on. Uh, they're both fantastic platforms. Uh, I support both of them, obviously, and uh, just do whatever works for you or what you feel comfortable with. I just want to make sure that this wasn't solely Twitch focus and let you know that the, there are other options other than Twitch streaming available. Uh, again, YouTube was not known for live streaming in the past. However, they are making great effort in becoming one of the top streaming and content creation platforms available on the internet. So anyway, good luck. Have fun. As always, love you all. Peace.